Well, hey y'all and welcome to the Hillbilly Chicken Ranch. I'm Susan. I'm your hostess and today we're going to be canning some uh, white northern beans or white northern beans with ham and I'm going to be using a recipe out of the Amish canning cookbook. The recipe is found on page 145 and it just explains to you how to can your beans. It says place beans or peas in a large pot Add water and cover by two inches. Boil, bring to a boil and boil for two minutes. Remove from heat, cover pot and let stand, stand for one hour. Drain, again, add water to the beans or peas and cover by two inches. Bring to a boil for 30 minutes, stirring often. And to hot pack only, hot, uh, pack hot beans or peas into jars. Add salt if desired, one teaspoon per, per quart. One half teaspoon per pint. Cover with hot cooking liquid and or boiling water, leaving one inch head space. Follow the pressure canning directions on page, on chapter four. Process pints for 75 minutes. Quarts for 90 minutes at 10 psi. Adjusting the psi as necessary for your altitude according to the altitude adjustment directions found on pages 143 and 144. And the other thing that I'm going to be using today that I have not used on here before, but I have used them in the past, is the Tantler reusable lids and rings. According to the Tantler box, it says inspect top of jars for cracks or nicks. Wash, rinse, and sterilize jar jars, scald lids and rings, leaving hot water until ready to use. Headspace, follow the USDA guidelines for proper headspace. Wipe the top of jar after filling. Place lid uh, ring combo on the jar. Develop a fill for correct screw band tightness. Place jar on a smooth surface countertop. Using index finger to stabilize jar, tighten screw band until the jar spins. This is a proper, proper tightness to allow the jar to vent during the process. Do not over tighten. Process per instructions of various foods. Upon the completion, immediately remove the jars from the processor. Allow any bubbling to subside for a maximum of two to three minutes for safety. Place a towel over the jar and tighten the screw band firmly Exception for jams and jellies, tighten well immediately upon removal from the processor. Allow the jars to reach room temperature. Remove screw bands and check for seal by slightly lifting on the lid. Removing the uh, lid, you use tat the tattler opener or dull object. Do not use a sharp object. You clean your lids and your rubber rings and store for the next year use and these will last uh, the rubber gaskets last up to 10 years so this is a tattler lid it's got this little groove here and it comes with a little thin rubber gasket that fits over that and you want that gasket to be in place when you place it on your lid on your jar and you will see this gasket when you have completed your canning process and uh, that seals your jar and your lid so that your food stays preserved and these are really good they're a little expensive to buy i know uh, but they're well worth the money and then every 10 years you just replace the gaskets you always want to check these so because you know over time they can get nicked or you know um, they're plastic after all they can get nicks in them so you want to inspect them before you use them anyway, but you would not have to replace them probably indefinitely if you take good care of them. We went to Honey Baked Ham and we bought two of their ham bones for $6.99. And this is the meat and the fat that I got off of two ham bones. And there's probably two to four pounds of meat in this bag. 
I'm going to use it up and I'm going to be canning beans with it, but I can also make a bean soup with ham uh, with this ham and it will be wonderful. Now the recipe says that I will uh, process these for 75 minutes for pints and 90 minutes for quarts, so I don't need to adjust my time because I'm adding meat to my jars. So that's good to know. And I've tried the dry bean method in the past and I really did not like the end result because I was fighting black uh, I don't know if it's black mold or not, but it was inside the lid of the jar. It could have been just dirt coming off the beans. I don't know. But I didn't like that, so I have started using the uh, soak method on my beans, and I find out that my product is just as good, if not better, than the dry soak method. Now, there's a lot of people out there that will argue with me over that. I'm not here to argue. This is how I do it in my kitchen. You do whatever you want to in your kitchen. I just ask you to follow safety rules when you can anything. And I've got my water in my pressure canner uh, coming up to temperature. I've got some water on the back burner coming up to a boil. We're going to drain our beans. I've got my jars heated up with hot water. We're going to get all these beans into the jars, some meat in the jars, and then we're going to fill it up to the one inch mark with the water. I'm not going to add any salt because I'm adding ham to this. Ham's fairly salty anyway, and I can always salt when I take them out of the jar. Now this is approximately six cups of beans that I had. I'm trying to use up my older beans that I had in my cabinet before I bring out new beans. And these have been soaking for a good two hours. So they are nice and swollen and they are beautiful. This is the bad beans that I removed with the bay leaves that I had in my jars. But uh, these are the bad beans that I removed from my beans be before I started the soak process. And you can see there's some really bad beans. That's why you always check your beans, y'all. We're gonna empty out some of these jars and we're gonna get started. Now the rule of the thumb is that you're going to put a half a cup of beans uh, into each of your jars. I'm assuming I'm going to get about 12 jars out of this. Um, but because these have been soaking for two hours, I may add a little bit extra beans to the jars. And we're going to go through here and we're going to do up as many of these jars as we can do. Now I took out, I think there's 16 jars here, and I'm pretty sure I'm not going to use all of these jars. But I want my jars to stay as hot as possible, and we're just going to move along and get these jars filled up. Because these beans are partially cooked, they, they are already swollen up, and they're probably going to still do some more swelling. We'll see how many we get out of this. Oh, 
Okay. That's 12 jars there. I still got a lot of beans, so I'm going to go ahead and do these other ones up. And then we'll go on and move move forward with finishing up the beans and the jars. And I'm going to go with a half a cup, a uh, quarter cup at this point and just go from there and see if I need to add more. Because I really don't want to go past the 16 jars if I can help it. And I may have to go past that because I do have a lot of beans here. So we'll get an idea of how much I'm going to be able to put in each jar. And I still have some beans left, y'all. So we're just going to throw... Keep throwing them in here, and I would say less than a cup of beans per jar with this soak method. And that's a little under one cup of beans in each jar. Now I'm going to start um, adding my meat. All right.
I'm going to wipe my hands because I've been handling meat. And we're going to start uh, putting some of this hot water into my jars. Okay, while I'm waiting for my water to come back to a boil, I'm just going to wipe the rims of my jars and check for nicks. Um, make sure all that fat is off of the top of the jars, and then I'm going to start placing these on here. And you want to make sure they are centered on your jars. my bands want that centered so I'm going to put my finger on it and then tighten the band down Now you're supposed to tighten these till the jar spins on the surface, but I have a towel underneath them and I just move it ever so slightly until it stops turning. And we're going to go ahead and get these in the canner while we wait on that water to come to a boil. Which is almost there in the back. Now my canner will hold 18 pints, um, but I'm only doing 16. And I found that if I soak my beans prior to, I usually get more jars than what you would get if you put just dry beans in a jar. I forgot to show y'all to do bubble. You want to do bubble because that water level is going to fall down. And that just gets rid of any air pockets in there. And then I will adjust my water on just this last one, I think. Now I'm going to move up a couple of jars so I can wipe the rims and get them into my canner. And I did that just because it makes it easier to use that uh, tool when I get ready to tighten my bands down. Now, the first time I used the Tatler lids, it was a little intimidating. 
but I got the hang of it rather quickly and I was very pleased with my end result. Well, I'm going to have to wait on that one. Can't get in there to get that jar. So we're going to go ahead and get these in the canner. And I did turn my uh, temperature down while I'm trying to get these jars filled up. On my canner. Because I don't want my water boiling away. Before I get my canner started. And I got that one done. And I got room for one more in the bottom. That's what it's going to look like going into the cannery, y'all. I'm going to go ahead and drop my tray on top of those jars, and then I can load the, the second layer. And we'll do that off camera. Okay, I've got all my jars in the canner, and I'm getting ready to put my lid on. And I've got my lid on and secured and I'm waiting for it to vent and it's starting to vent already and it will vent for 10 minutes once it gets the full steam going. Okay, my timer has gone off. It has been uh, processing for 75 minutes at 10 PSI and I am lowering the temperature on my canner. Uh, a little at a time just to allow it to, to start to come down off the pressure. And then we're going to allow this to sit undisturbed for 40 minutes to let the canner release the pressure naturally. And I got another pot going of uh, black eyed peas and I'm going to do another pressure canner full of that but it won't be on this video. But I am going to be doing back-to-back -back pressure canning today. Alrighty, y'all. We got the canner open. And we're waiting for the timer to go off to lift these jars out. Then I'm going to let them sit for another two to three minutes. And then I'm going to crank down the rings to allow the seal to adhere according to the Tatler instructions. Okay, our timer is going off. 
And we have beans. I'm going to get these loaded up. do that. And these drawers are boiling hot. So once I get them all removed from the canner, I'm going to set my timer for another two to three minutes. And then we're going to make sure that the band is on there tight. And I can Reload my canner. Go ahead and get this shelf out. These do not pop like the normal lids. So you're not going to hear that pinging sound with these type of lids. Give my shoulder a break and do it the other way. They're going to continue to expand in the jar as they cool. But we have a good amount of great northern beans, y'all, with a little bit of ham flavor to them. Just a little bit of that ham, uh, scrap ham in there. And okay, these have been out of the canner for three minutes, and I have a couple of muck towels that I'll use and I'm just gonna tighten the bands just a slight you know just enough to make sure that they're tight on the jar. I may have to move them around to get to them. I'm gonna move this one down. That one's on there tight. Just ever so slightly, they need to be tightened. That one's good, good, good. Get this one out where I can tighten the top. Gonna double check this one. I think it's on there tight. Nope. That one is. And you're not really tight, you know, cranking it all the way down you're just getting it on there till it's finger tight I got two more jars after this one and these will sit on my counter 12 to 24 hours before I remove the rings at that point I'm going to check the seal 
and uh, I will wash my jars and get them labeled for the pantry. So that's 16 pints of beans. That's enough beans for me and my husband, 16 meals. Thank you very much for watching, everyone.